Hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. Today we're going to work on stitching my block of the Autumn Bell Pole. I'm really looking forward to getting started on this. I had a lot of fun playing with design ideas last time. And so let's get started. I have my vase here of dried grasses and just all sorts of different things. The cats really like this, so I have to... There's Mushu. No, you can't eat that. That's not for you, bud. But I want to have it available for my color reference. Kitty, get down. And I think when we look at these stems, this is where I'm going to start. I have to start somewhere where I think it can sit in the background and then work my way forward. We'll, we'll figure this out eventually. Oh my gosh, I've just been recording this with... No, it's recording. Okay. I don't know. Can you see that? Let's... I get too many cameras going and then I have issues getting everything adjusted. So try. Does anybody else find this that putting that first stitch in a project is the most daunting part of the whole thing? I don't know why it is about that, but I often find that to be the case. Oh my gosh. I just stitched a whole bunch on this project and I didn't have the overhead camera turned on. Let me recap what I have just done. So I just stitched one of these dried garlic chive seed head on my block. I used four different threads in this to get the variation. This is the one I did for the golden stem. And then I stitched this little area here with this kind of grayer beige. And then I stitched these little stems for the seed head with this one, which is a hand-dyed avocado thread. I think it's a number 12 pearl cotton that was originally white, and I dyed it using avocado years ago, and I've never used it for anything, so it's really good to use that, but it's got a nice subtle variation in it, and it did a really nice job on those stems. I really like that. And then I started stitching these little seed heads with that, but then I felt it needed more contrast, so I went to this one, which I believe is a Karen Wildflowers thread. So that's what I've used on that, and I'm really happy with that. And then the leaf was also with the same thing I did the seed heads with. Now we're going to move on to some of these other grasses. I have this grass here, and you can see that the stem, we'll hold that up, the stem is darker. It's got sort of this reddish color to it, and this is another stem from the same grasses, but the seed head's broken off, and the leaves are broken off of this one. So this gives me the idea of what I want to be doing as I stitch these others. So I'm going to keep these handy. The next stop in doing this is picking out the colors I want to use to stitch these items. And so these are that subtle reddish colors. Look at this one. I, that actually is a perfect match to the colors in those grasses. And so I could just stitch with that as is. And then when I get to this part here, back to something like that, but you know, even that might might work because it doesn't have to be exact. I want it to show up on this block. I'm really working to stitch these background elements before I go too far. I think six strands is too much. So I think we're going to divide it into three strands. So it will flatten out because it's embroidery thread rather than pearl cotton. It'll flatten out on the fabric a little bit. So this one... I, I mentioned earlier when I was when I started on this that I'm stitching these background grasses all the way down because even though this stuff is going to cover it, um, it may not cover it all. It's going to poke through, and so I don't mind seeing that. So I have to decide which element I want the furthest back, and that actually might be this one here. So let's start somewhere over in here. So the stems, I'm just going to be doing a simple stem stitch. I'm not too particular about stem or outline. I really think they're the same stitch. One, the thread goes over the top, one it goes underneath. But it has the same impact. I tend to stitch with the thread going over my needle. This thread's going to be nice with the variation in it. I can see it coming already. And then I think we'll stitch the leaves with this and then maybe with the avocado dyed thread. 
and I realize that as I get to areas where there's these seams, my stitches don't necessarily always go all the way through to the backing. As long as it looks good on the surface, that's the main thing. So I'm really enjoying the improvisational aspect of this project. The not having a set pattern and coming up with my own and not using something that somebody else has drawn. That's actually been a lot of fun. I was a little frustrated at first when I couldn't figure out what to do and I was, you know, had my pencil sketches and my iPad drawings. I was getting really frustrated with it. And so deciding to pull in the natural elements and use those right on the block to lay it out was so much fun. I just really enjoyed that. And I hope that that was something that you enjoyed seeing in the last video. I think I'm gonna come out here. I don't think I'm gonna go up with that. I think I'm gonna take this leaf and turn. Moose, you get down. Get down. Get down, buddy. Come on. You can come up and be here with me, but don't be up there. And so as I'm looking at this one with the leaves on it, see there's one leaf here that's very reddish. And look at this one. Can you see the dark stripe down the center of that leaf? So I think that's what I'm going to do here with this one. So I'm going to take this thread, although I've already been turning to a slightly lighter color here. Now the other question is, do I run the leaf off of the block? Because none of these other blocks have anything that runs off of the block. So I'm thinking maybe this one needs to end inside the block. So I'm going to curl it down just a smidgen more. And now we're right where that dark color is coming up. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to stitch that right alongside what I just stitched. And hopefully that's going to show as that dark center of that leaf. I think we're going to bring it around to the other side. So hopefully it'll give that leaf some dimension here as it curls around that stem. And I think we're going to end it right about there. All right, so now I'm going to knot this off and I'm going to go and, and kind of do the same thing on that other leaf. And so I already have this leaf looking like it turns. So I'm going to kind of stitch up the middle of this, giving it that center vein. There's where it's going to go, down the middle after it bends. So this leaf I intend to make a little lighter. I think, than the top one. I'm going to change the shape of the leaf slightly just to suit the block better. We're basically being a painter with thread and trying to design and come up with it as we go. And again, I don't want to come all the way down because none of these others come all the way to the edge really except on this one. All right, so I think I'm going to come out and I'm going to do one of these other stems. And I've got some dark in there right now, so I think I'm going to start with that up in here, in the middle of that seed head. Just stitch down this stem for a bit. I think I'll stitch till I run out of thread on this one. Because those stems aren't the same color the whole way, so they have some variation. So that's just fine. Now here I need to decide, is this grass going to go over the front? I think it's going to go over the front of that one, but behind this one. That's the plan, anyway. So, what kinds of things have I been up to? Raking leaves. I think I'm probably about a quarter of the way done. It's a slow process. After I'm done stitching this morning, I, that's my plan to spend a good part of the afternoon raking and bagging leaves. 
I'm really glad we have the muslin behind this block when I'm stitching on this silk because it is so soft that I don't think it, you could embroider on it if I didn't have the backing fabric. I think here comes Mooshu. Sit down, bud. Come on. I know it's all so interesting. What do you think, buddy? Oh, that's a sweet boy. Okay, back to stitching. No, no. So I'm really glad to see this block taking shape. It was a bit intimidating getting started since it's all my own design and there's always that little bit of anxiety about, is it going to work? Did I get things in the right spot? But you know, we're just going to make it work. I think every creative person has doubts about what they're doing. Is it working? Is it, did I make the right decisions? Competing with the cat here. He just wants to be near. He doesn't want to sit on my lap, but he wants to be near me when I'm working on something. I'm bring it down just a little bit further into this mass till I know it's going to probably just disappear behind all the stuff that's still to come, which is probably right in here. To untwist that thread periodically. Now this may get completely covered up down here, I'm not sure. I don't like it when you're looking at something and you should see something continue and it doesn't. Things don't generally end in midair. So there's those stems. Now I do have this stem up here. So I'm going to start that one over here. So this is just simple stitching so far. It's just outline stitch it's, and lazy days is all I've done so far today. I do think I'm going to let the garlic chive be in front of that. It'll be behind the chrysanthemums. So let me just stitch on this and then as we move to the next thing then I'll come back to you so you don't have to watch just plain stitching here. I have two lines drawn here and I need to decide what I want to do with that. I was obviously looking at this stem here. In fact, you can see it right there. I think I'm just going to go ahead and stitch up. I might end one here and the other one let it run off. So as I think about these blocks and we think about crazy quilting, you know, most people think of crazy quilting as being stitches on seams, maybe some motifs in the center. And this one, there's really not much seam stitching on here except on, I think, the block that has the little barn on it. This one here under Mushu's paw has a kind of a floral seam that goes up one seam. So we still have the crazy patchwork. And I think that's one of the lovely things about crazy quilting is we really can adapt it and make it our own and do with it what we want. There's no hard, fast rule that says you have to do it a specific way. I think that looks good. And having that double thing up here also helps make it seem like there's an odd number of stems. So that helps with that. So now I think I need to come back and work on this leaf. I do think I want that dark veining down the center of this one as well. I want to look at this leaf as I go on that. I think that avocado color would go really well, and especially if we blend it into some of this. If we've got cat hair. Thank you, Mushu. So I'm thinking for stitching the leaf, I don't want the three strands. I think I'm going to use two. And the reason for doing that is I want the variation in texture. If everything is the same number of strands, then it starts to look very flat. And I don't really want this one to look flat. I want it to have that dimension. So I think the red comes closer to this end. So that reddish line doesn't come all the way out. It kind of ends in there. So I'm not going to bring it all the way. We're going to start part way. And it'll fade into the more reddish as we go. And I think that'll be perfect. I love working with variegated threads. just think they make such a difference in how a piece looks. And so we're going to go out a little bit further from that stem before we make that turn down. Now we'll come back. 
And that leaf actually looks to me like it turns redder as it gets toward that stem. So I think we'll just take this all the way down. Now I'm going to turn around and I'm just going to stitch right next to that. Let me do longer stitches this time. And we'll start filling in that leaf. I think the subtle variations in this thread will give it some real interest. I might just switch directions with my thread here. Otherwise it was starting to have almost a, a chained appearance on it. And I didn't really want that. So when you do that with the outline stitch side by side like that, it almost makes it look long and short. And it's definitely pinker on the underside of that leaf, I've noticed. I'm trying not to take all my stitches the same length. I want some variation in them here. One of the things that's easy to have happen is that the more you stitch, the smaller and finer your stitches become. At least that's the way it is for me. I don't know if it's that way for everybody. And that pink's going to be pretty subtle the further down here we get. So I think we're going to end that there. One of the things I always love in a round robin like this, though, is how every block shows each individual stitcher's sensibilities when it comes to stitching. You know, we all approach things slightly different, and you really see their voice come out in it. I love that about it. And so when you have a bell pole like this, with everybody stitching on it, I can look at it, and I know immediately who stitched which one. Well, rather than have you sit here and watch every single stitch I make, I'm going to get this leaf and this leaf done, and then I'll come back to you and we'll stitch these fronds. And I think that's as far as we're going to get on this today. And then in the next session, we're going to be doing the chrysanthemums. Let me turn the camera off, and I'm just going to stitch for a little bit, and then I'll be back. All right, I am back. So I've gotten my leaves stitched. I added a little bit more to this one as well. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks at the moment. I don't see anything else glaring that I need to do, but I want to get on to these motifs up here. When I look at the actual grass, you see how the dark continues up, and it's almost a little bumpy pattern, and I think that's actually where some of the seeds are in the middle of that. I'm thinking what I want to do I want to bring some little French knots in here. And I'm just trying to decide what colors I want to do with that. You know, I think it actually still needs this color. And then I'm really debating about color. That's too, too dark. I just feel like this is not quite where I want to be. And I think that's going to be too dark. So in looking at what I have, I think I just feel like that's not going to quite do it. So I'm wondering about using the same thing I used over here for that. It's actually not a bad match. Again, I don't have to be exact. I just feel like this is going to be heavy. It's a size 8, and if it was a size 12, it would be perfect. But I don't have size 12 in that. What about this one? Maybe let's do that one. So I think I'm going to do, if I did little French knots in this down the center, and then came off with this, or if I should stick with this one. Mm. Decisions. Now, have you noticed that I am, so far, not using any of the threads, hardly, that I actually chose for this project based on what was in the other blocks? And yet, they're all still going to go. They're all still going to coordinate relatively well. I think we're going to use this for those French knots. I had to think about it for a few minutes. So let's again use two strands, because those are tiny. I don't want them to overpower everything else. Mushu is watching intently what I'm doing here. He's sitting just off camera. I'm just going to start with some little random mini French knots out here. I don't think they need to be very big. So I'm doing two wraps. Yeah, I think that's going to be just enough. I don't think I want too many. I don't want that to be the focal point. And now let's do these. And since I'm on the darker portion of thread, I'm going to start here near the base. So 
So this French knot is the third type of stitch we're using on this. I'm trying to be random in my placement. So you don't need a lot of stitches to be able to do this kind of thing. Just a few and it's amazing what you can do with it. I don't want them to be identical. Anytime you're doing natural elements, while there is symmetry in nature, most plants, even with the symmetry, have a lot of variation. So now we're going to switch over to this thread. I'm pretty sure this is another Karen Wildflowers, but this is going to be in their solid range. So now we're going to just do straight stitches. If we look back at this, those just come off everywhere. It really would almost be better in sewing thread. Okay, well, let's go see what I've got there. Hold on. I have a couple of things. So here's our example again that we're looking for. I remembered that I have this tray, and these are sulky 12 weight blendable cotton petites. They're suitable for machine stitching. So I have this variegated yellow, but I also have that rayon, and that's actually really close. So I'm just trying to look through here. Not seeing much else in the way of yellows. Lots of blues and greens. That's pink, we don't want that. Another beige, gray. There's that. And then I also have, that's just a Coates and Clark cotton. I think it's too yellow. And so that's gonna be too yellow as well. But I'm intrigued with this. I just am not sure it's gonna show up on there. Trying to think creatively. Well, look at that yellow though. I need to think about what's on all these blocks though, and there's nothing as fine as sewing thread. Here's my seed head I'm trying to replicate. I have this thread that I'm more than likely going to use. If I would prefer, I could go with this, but I'd, I've already got a lot of that, and that's not the color of the seed head. It's the color of the leaves. Here's the leaf, and I think I've come pretty close. Pretty happy with that. This is a good color. I've got sewing thread, if I really want to go fine with it, that would be a good match, as well as this rayon. And that would be a good match. The rayon disappears on there, though. So I'm going to stick with this. I think in the long run, going to be what shows up the best. While it's heavier than what's there, it's a stylized thing, and I need to remember that. It's so easy to get caught up in trying to make those exact copies. We're just going to make straight stitches. They're going to come off in all directions. Some of them are going to be short because they're coming out directly towards you. I think it's going to show up really well out here, but in here it's not going to show up as much. I'm just going to keep going. My plan is to be able to come back and add more as I need. I want it to cover the stem. So it's just got to be really random. But all pointing toward that outside edge. I can always come back with one of those darker threads and add accents in. But I do think I'm going to want need that color. So I dug out my embroidery thread to look at and see if I could find one that I thought was going to go. So I have a few out. I don't need to be exact, but the problem I'm having is that I thought this one was going to work and it just disappears. So if I'm looking at these, this is the best match. I thought about this, but 
I just feel like it's too heavy. Maybe it's not. Maybe I just need to switch to that. Let's try it. I think I'm going to pull all these out. So this is one of the colors that I had chosen. That's, that's why I always get out so much stuff. Is I never just know exactly what's going to work until I try it. And if it's not working, I prefer to stop it and start over again. I just hope this has the look that I'm after. This I wanted it to be lighter and brighter. And I'm just concerned. So I might come back in with this one or even that one to add some light into it. This time, I'm actually going to start from the bottom here. I felt like I was overlapping the wrong direction. It's always something. My gosh, what a day here. All right, I've got batteries charging. Remember to bring those stitches up in the center. Yeah, this is better so far. I like this better. I think it's definitely showing more appropriately. I do think it may need some accent with the little Brit Bright or gold here at some point, but we'll see on that. I'm glad I changed colors. I think it definitely helped. So while I'm stitching these, let me tell you about my weekend. I have taught classes at a store in Greeley, Colorado called Sew so Downtown in the past. And I've also participated in something they call their Demo Days, which stands for demonstration. This past Saturday was their November Demo Day. This week, they featured a couple, Patty and Alan Brown, who are featured in this current issue of Quilt Folk magazine. They did a presentation at Sew Downtown, inspired by the magazine article. When I was doing Crazy Quilt magazine, I featured one of their wool crazy quilts in the magazine. So I've had a lot of communication with them, and they'd live fairly close to me, but I had never actually met them before. It was a delight to go and meet them and hear their presentation. They've got an amazing collection of crazy quilts. It was just a delightful morning learning about those. And a lot of these I've seen before because they've been exhibited at the Rocky Mountain Quilt Museum in Golden, Colorado. I think that was back in 2021. That works pretty well. All right, let's tie this one off and then we'll do the next one. Anyway, they've got a wonderful collection of antique crazy quilts. They also crazy quilt themselves, and they collaborate on their crazy quilt projects. So they've done one large one called Boom Boom, Ain't It Great to Be Crazy. It's a fun quilt, and now they're working on another one. So it was fun to see that in person and all these antique crazy quilts and meet other people who were interested in crazy quilting. I did talk to them about the possibility of doing an interview with them. So that is something that isn't going to happen immediately. It's going to be a something down the road. Maybe in the new year we'll do that one. And for me, those are much bigger videos to produce. They take a lot of time and effort. So don't look for it tomorrow because it won't be there. It's just something in the works that I thought you might enjoy hearing about. What a lovely day. And I'm getting excited about my December ramblings project and starting to gather some items for that. I'll give you a sneak preview. We've got some lovely little stars. I'll be using those in the December one. So I'm having fun thinking about that. Um, I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. So now that I've got that done, I don't know that I need to add the brighter yellow in there. And so next time we're going to work on these chrysanthemums and leaves. 
we are getting really close to being finished on this. So I'm looking forward to that. Let me know what you think so far of the progress and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for following along with me today. I've had camera issues and cat issues and just a few bunch of things today. So I apologize if this video isn't as coherent as most of them. Not that they're all coherent, but I'm really pleased with where I got to on this today. It definitely had its challenges. I haven't really done plain embroidery for quite a long time, but I'm really pleased with where this has gotten to today. And I look forward to working on the chrysanthemums next time, getting this block finished. And then we'll take a look at all the blocks together and see if there's anything else that I need to do on them. And then we're going to get this one finished by the end of November, God willing. Thank you again for following along today. I really appreciate your presence here. I'm deeply grateful. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Happy stitching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.